Okay, so now we've talked, let's talk about the trays. I mean, that's a fairly important part. It's how we're going to use some sort of, until we go entirely digital or optical, we need some sort of thing to capture and hold onto our impression material. So we've got custom trays, U-shape, this is for a maxilla. This is the exact, this is the same patient with a stock tray. This is a different patient, but I'm using a stock tray. Uh, this is a horseshoe, dual arch, triple tray that we've all seen, and a couple of triple arch trays. Now, let's talk about stock trays versus custom trays. So let's pull these out of the way. So I went to Europe, I was taught with custom trays, everything. Okay, fair enough. Literature changes, things change. Saw Europeans using stock trays. Wow, that's cool. That's awesome. But now I've learned that, uh, say for example, Ruta et al. in 1996 showed that a custom tray with approximately 2 to 2.5 millimeters of spacing between the tray itself and the preparation showed no difference between this scenario here, where you have a stock tray with approximately 2 to 2.5 millimeters of spacing, so base plate wax or whatever, space of material between the tray and the preparation. There was no difference between these two situations. It was significant. I said, great. One of the things to think about in the maxilla, though, is that one, you're wasting a lot of material, impression material. Understood. Two, we don't have that, in this case, we have the inside of this horseshoe. So that provides that rigid wall against uh, where the uh, material will butt against. In this, we don't. We just have an open palette. So I actually have a huge, let's take this off. Look at the thickness. What's happening? Well, we're trying to pr eliminate uh, shrinkage and deflection, plastic deformation of these materials. So I don't have that two millimeter rigid wall in this open palette stock tray. That's something to really think about. Will it make a significant difference? Hard to say. It's more of a Hmm, let's just think about that. The accuracy of impression is when you use not only uh, the mechanical lock of, say, your impression, custom impression tray, whatever you incorporate, but also an adhesive. However, a universal spray showed lower retention than just a regular brush-on adhesive, such like this. So I never used these before, got to the residency, and one of the tips that we learned from one of our Prosel mentors is when you apply your adhesive to say a triple tray is not to coat the mesh and the reason why is that you want this the literature shown that you need to let this dry for seven minutes as Dr. Trey says if it's not dry it's going to act like a separator so it's just a slippery if it's not tacky it's just going to act as a separator or just be slippery and if you fill up the perforations with this material and let it dry the impression material can't go through it because that's essentially we're getting that mechanical retention. So what we do is we leave this open so the impression can flow through, the impression material can flow through it. Just a little tip. So one of the things, so we're going to, I'm not going to talk about custom trays anymore, or stock trays, we're going to talk about dual arch. And this applies to the other impression trays as well, is before you go ahead and apply this material, check to see, you know, try this intraorally. How many times have I been burned when the patient bites down like this on it and you're not getting a proper inner occlusal record? Check to see if it fits. Check to see that we have two different lengths. You've got short ones, you've got long ones. If you're taking an impression of, say, the, the uh, first bicuspid and the, you don't check your tray in and for whatever reason, when the, pa the only way the patient can bite down is or occlude together is when the its impression tray is right at the butt cusp, that's probably not the best. Going to have the best result. So try the try in the tray and rehearse with the patient. Okay, I need you to when you bite down. I need we need to make sure that your opposing teeth are all contacting. <clears throat> rehearse it with the patient. Make sure that um, they know when to bite down and hold for the appropriate amount of time for set. So we talked about custom trays, stock trays, 
dual arch trays, mechanical retention, chemical ad adhesion retention. Now what are some of the other tips that uh, we pulled out? Well using, um, typically you can use, uh, get the patient to retract their gingiva or retract their cheeks using cheek retractors to help pull back the cheeks. Additionally, you can use uh, another hint that um, I was taught <clears throat> was using these dry angles, and they're they're effective actually on the maxilla and the, if you're capture, trying to capture uh, an impression on the mandible. Often um, at these times when you dry all the tissues, people start salivating, sort of a natural reflex. So you can place one of these. Some have uh, silver, this tin foil coating on one side. Often they're both dry. Uh, both cardboard on both sides. So you place, in this case, you place this cardboard side toward the buccal mucosa. This is the patient facing us here. And this, not only does this try to absorb some of that saliva coming out uh, of the uh, parotid duct, but it also, when you go to place your, you place your low viscosity impression material and then you go to place your dual arch tray or your custom tray, this is an, trying to prevent uh, this from this material that you've already expressed on the tooth from becoming wet because it won't, once it becomes wet, it decreases the ability of it to adhere to its own, uh, the heavy ba heavy body material. So it becomes laminated. So the light, bo the light body doesn't really stick. It just becomes like two different layers between uh, the light body and the heavy body. Been there, done that. Another tip that I was taught was you can use this on the mandibular arch say so you're trying to capture an impression on the mandible, take one of these, have the, have the patient, and we would have this uh, silver side, if you have these types, towards the preparation. Have the patient raise their, elevate their tongue to the roof of their mouth. Normally they're anesthetized in this whole region, by a mandibular block. Raise the tongue to the roof of their mouth, place this as deep into the um, tissue between the tongue and the uh, lingual uh, mucosa, and then have the patient just rest, and that will, as the patient rests her tongue, it slowly depresses this and takes it with it. So this effectively retracts the uh, the tongue as well. That was a, a nifty nifty tip that I learned.